All right, we are back talking about AP macroeconomics, and we are in unit 3.6, uh, talking about the fiscal policy and the multiplier, and this is part two today. Um, we're gonna focus on the multiplier effect. So, multiplier effect. Why do cities want the Super Bowl in their stadium? Because the, they bring money in. And that initial extra spending multiplies into more spending. For example, if Bobby spends $100 on Jason's product, Jason now has $100 extra dollars and he could buy $100 of Nancy's product. And now Nancy has an extra $100 and she can buy $100 of Jill's product. The result, if you add all that together, is 300 extra increase in consumer spending. This is called the multiplier effect, and it just shows how spending is magnified in the economy. Like one initial drop of extra spending, new money, turns into more new money. So, effects of government spending. So if the government spends $5 million, because we've said in fiscal policy that if the government spends money or they reduce taxes, that's going to increase AD. So if the government spends $5 million, will AD increase by that same amount, by $5 million? The answer is no, because of what I just said about the multiplier effect. AD is going to increase even more as government spending becomes more income for consumers. So consumers will take that extra $5 million and they will spend it. And the people who they spent the money on, they will spend that money. And it's just going to grow and expand. So how much will AD increase? Well, that depends on how much of the new income consumers save. Because if they don't spend it all, it's not going to grow exponentially. If they save a lot, spending an AD will increase less. And if they save a little, spending and, increase, uh, spending and AD will increase a lot. So that brings us to the marginal propensity to consume. How much do people spend? So marginal propensity to consume, also known as MPC, is how much people consume rather than save when there's a change in disposable income. So it's always expressed as a fraction or a decimal. Here's the formula, marginal propensity to consume, or MPC, is the change in consumption, or change in spending, divided by the change in disposable income. So let's do a practice. Examples, if you received 100 bucks and spent 50, then your MPC is gonna be 50 over 100, which is 0.5, all right? And if you received $100 and spent 80, then your MPC is 80 divided by 100, which is 0.8. And then down the last one, if you received $100 and you spend $100, then your MPC is 100 divided by 100, which is 1. All right, that's MPC, marginal propensity to consume. This is marginal propensity to save, and it's just like the other one, instead of uh, um, saving, spending, it's about saving. So marginal propensity to save, MPS, is how much people save rather than consume when there is a change in disposable income. So it is also expressed as a fraction or a decimal. Formula is very similar. MPS, or marginal propensity to save, is a change in savings divided by a change in disposable income. So if you receive $100 and you save 50, then your marginal propensity to save is 50 over 100, which is 0.5. Now the next question is, if you receive $100 and your MPC is 0.7, what is your MPS? So that means if you have 100 bucks and your MPC, what you consume is 0.7, that means you spend $70 of the 100. What's left? $30. 30 divided by 100 is 0.3. So, it's very um, key to note that MPS is 1 minus MPC. If you add MPC and MPS together, they equal 1 because you can either save or spend in economics. There is no other choice. You're either going to spend it all or you're going to save it. Even if you're burning it, whatever, we consider that saving. So if you're not spending it, then we consider that saving it. So MPC and MPS added together always equal one. 
because those are your only two choices. Um, with that in mind, let's calculate the spending multiplier. Because remember, our question was, if the government increases spending by $5 million, how much is that going to change um, AD? It's not going to change it by $5 million. It's going to change it by more than $5 million. And the way to figure out how much it'll be is with this spending multiplier. So the spending multiplier is 1 over MPS or 1 over 1 minus MPC, because we know when we add MPS and MPC together, they equal 1. So here's the problem. If the, if the MPC is 0.5, how much is the multiplier? So MPC is 0.5. That means MPS is 0.5. The spending multiplier is 1 over MPS, so 1 over 0.5. 1 over 0.5. If you have trouble with that fraction, you just move the decimal point over on both sides, and so now it's 10 divided by 5. So now MPS is 2. Okay? If the multiplier is 4, how much will an initial increase of $5 in government spending increase the gap? The formula is down here. The total change in GDP after an increase in spending is the spending multiplier times the initial change in spending. So if the change in spending is $5 and the multiplier is 4, you take 4 times 5 and the change is 20. Okay, the total change in GDP is 20. Um, and then the next question, how much will a decrease in $3 in spending decrease GDP? So we take the multiplier is 4 times that by the change, 3, and that's going to equal, it'll decrease it by $12. Okay, so super simple. Um, you just got to keep in mind that the spending multiplier is 1 divided what, by what people save. And as long as you are given in PC or the multiplier, you can figure out what the change is. This is what it looks like in more real life. So, how does that formula work? So, assume that NPC is 0.5 for everybody. So, we assume that the Super Bowl comes to town and there's an increase of $100 in sales in Ashley's restaurant. So now Ashley has an extra $100. MPC is 0.5. So what that means is she has an extra $100 in income. She's going to save 50 and spend another 50. And she's going to spend it at Carl's salon. So now Carl has an extra $50 in income. So he's going to save 25 and spend 25 at Micah's fruit stand. Now Micah has an extra $25 in more income, he's gonna save $12.50 and spend $12.50 and it keeps going until you get to the last penny. And you can do that all the way or you can use that formula where it's one over MPC, MPS, excuse me, one over MPS. Um, in this case, what's the multiplier? MPC is 0.5, what's MPS? 0.5, one divided by 0.5, we already figured out from the last slide, is two. So the multiplier is 2. What is the total change in GDP? 2 times the extra money, the first initial change in money was $100. 2 times $100 is 200. So if we kept going and adding all this money up, 100 plus 50 plus 25 plus 1250 plus all the way down, it's going to get us to $200. And then we don't have to do all that extra adding. We can just use the multiplier to figure it out. Um, and again, the formula, total change in GDP is the spending multiplier times the initial change in spending. All right. That is it for the multiplier effect. And again, the multiplier is just uh, a tool we use to figure out how, by how much um, spending will change after that initial change in spending. So, that's it.